So having dealt with Duchamp, we also have to deal with Man Ray. And his real name is Emmanuel Radzinski. He changes his name, goes by Man Ray. And he's interested in mass-produced and technology, really dealing with both of those things, sort of consumerist ideas. He likes the dislocation of objects, creating a new awareness in his viewer of what should be there or what the function of an item should be. For example, here we are immediately reminded that that probably should not be a snapping turtle. But we immediately become conscious of it and what should be there simply by the juxtaposition, simply by removing the human head and putting a turtle's head there. So let's talk about one of his most famous pieces, Gift or Cadeau. And this consists of an everyday continental flat iron of the sort that had to be heated on a stove, and it's transformed into a non-functional disturbing item by the addition of a single row of 14 nails. So an iron, of course, is meant to flatten cloth, but you can't do that if you put a bunch of nails down the middle of it. Kind of tricky. The transformation of an item of ordinary domestic life into a strange, unnameable object with sadistic connotations exemplify the power of the object within Dada and Surrealism to escape the rule of logic and conventional identification of words and objects. Man Ray will, of course, once say they're objects that need names. And when we look at it, you realize it's really not an iron because since he subverted the purpose, it can't really be an iron. So it makes us question what it really is. Can we actually name it? it becomes a bit of an issue. Now, in his autobiography, Man Ray recounts the story of making the original Cadeau. On the day of the opening of his first solo exhibition in Paris, he had a drink with the composer Eric Satie. And on leaving the cafe, he sees a hardware store. There, with Satie's help, Man Ray spoke only poor French at this point. He bought the iron, some glue, and some nails and went to the gallery where he made the object on the spot. He intended his friends to draw lots for the work, called cadeau, or gift, but the piece was stolen during the course of the afternoon. And the interesting thing here is he doesn't just make one. As we see, he makes a lot of these. And it's not even a design that we can't make, right? You can go to an antique mall, get one of these irons, get a bunch of nails, glue it on, and go, I have cadeau. And you know what? It wouldn't subvert Man Ray in the least. It would be exactly what he intended it to be. He intends this to be a, nearly a ready-made, very simple object, the sort of thing that is starting the conversation, just like Duchamp. It's not about how much the iron costs. It's not about how long it takes to apply the nails. It's about the thought that will go through the viewer's mind, about the conversation the viewer will have either with themselves or with someone who's there with them. After all, he's taking the proper function of the iron and subverting it with a row of tacks, making smoothing and pressing impossible. And yet, at the same time, forcing us to sit there and think about what exactly is the function of an iron. I mean, we can immediately know that it's not going to work with the tax, but we have to kind of question exactly what an iron is used for and its exact purpose in our life. And then he'll recreate it over and over again, just like Duchamp, subverting the art market, because how do you handle Man Ray when he creates 10 or 500 or 5,000 of these irons? Which one's the original? Which one's worth money and which one isn't? And can one be worth more when you have so many of them? I mean, you can still buy this today. Just think about that. 